Hi, I'm Stephen Hant from Archery Supplies and today we want to look at stabilizers. And when I talk about stabilizers, I want to talk about the alignment of stabilizers. So I had one of my customers say that his stabilizer is not down the dead center of his bow. And my response was, that's pretty normal. So I want to talk about what he's getting at. Now the point, his point is when you put this big long 30 inch stabilizer on the bow, what he's what he should be getting at or what he should what he, i guess he's saying is that this weight here at the end should be straight down the middle of the bow now my point was that it's very very rare that it's ever exactly down the center now i can't even remember how they make these bows if they tap them by hand so they probably drill them and then they tap them and that's why they'll be out by a smidge. Now I'm going to show you my red expression and I'm going to show you my orange yellow perform. How they're out, when I say out of a line, they're out of a line. So let's start with the red perform. Now the red perform I shot for almost two to three years and I did very well with it. Now the first thing you'll notice when you zoom up on this bow is the arrow is pointing off to the left a little bit. Now if I try and line up the arrow with the stabilizer, you will see the stabilizer is pointing out to the left of the arrow. So then you go, well, okay, let's try and line up the string with the center of the hand grip and you'll see the arrow is, the stabilizer is pointing out to the left even further and also so is the arrow. Now, some people are going to say, look, you can do, you know, you can use the um, limb alignment to line up all this stuff. Like, like this bow shot really, really well. And I'm going to say most of the people who have issues, and when I say issues, probably the wrong word, most of the people who worry about this stuff should be more worried about their own archery than the equipment. So with me, I just wanted this bow to shoot straight. And when I say straight, I just wanted to be able to shoot the arrows in the middle and it clearly did that for me. So that was my number one concern. Now with the weight of the stabilizer, let's just talk about stabilizers for a second. Now the concept of having this big long stabilizer and putting this mass amount of weight down the end is that it makes it hard for you to move your bow left to right. The more weight you have at the end here and the further it is, is away from your pivot point which is there it's harder for you to move the bow so it makes it harder for you to move while you're aiming so the more weight you have the longer the stabilizer the harder it is for you to move that's the principle now the second principle of stabilizers is if you put the back stabilizers, back stabilizers on then you can basically balance up the weight of the front stabilizer. Now you say, well, that's the basis. Now, unfortunately, that's not the basis because there was a guy called Rio Wild who said, well, actually, if I stack a whole heap of weight on this side of my bow, for some reason, I shoot better. And he says, well, it's, my bow is not balanced at all. I create massive amount of torque if I put heaps of weight on this side of my bow and I seem to shoot better. So the bow is not balanced at all. So as a beginner archer, it leaves you a little bit confused. And that's why I'm always say you're best to try out stuff yourself and try stuff and see if it works for you. So the basis of a V-bar or a back stabilizer is it stops you from tilting your bow left to right. And generally what they're looking at is moving the weight down the bow. So this the concept of moving the weight down is like creating a, a keel on a yacht. So the more weight you have down here, it makes it harder for you to move your bow left to right. So you'll see here with my bow, I've actually added some weight down the bottom here. Now, did this weight make any difference? Probably not. Okay, I just added some because that was the fashionable thing to do. Now, this thing I've got in my hand, this is an angle down connect. Now the basis of this is this stabilizer is running straight in line with the arrow. 
Now what a lot of the top shooters will do is fit one of these disconnects. Now they come in different angles, eight degrees down, 15, maybe even 20 degrees down. And they move this way to the front further down here to create more balance on the bow. So the concept of this stabilizer being there or there, and I'm exaggerating, so it's not there, it's actually a millimeter or two millimeters to the left or two, three millimeters to the right. It's really not gonna affect anything with your shooting. Now to, sh to show this point, what I wanna do in this video is I wanna fit the disconnect on and we're gonna angle it eight degrees left and eight degrees right. And obviously no stabilizers out that far. Now with the disconnect, you can obviously get your stabilizer straight. If you want your stabilizer in line with the arrow or in line with the center of the handle, you can do it with the disconnect because all you've got to do is move it to the angle in which you want it. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna say with all the bows I sell and doesn't matter on the brand, whether it be Hoyt, PSE, Matthews, Elite, um, the stabilizer thing has always been the same whether it be a NIDA, whether it's left, right, or dead center, it's a little bit of luck when you get the bow. And I'm gonna say it makes no difference to your shooting because the concept of moving weight left or right is really not gonna make much difference. Now, just on that point, there was a hunting stabilizer developed a few years ago, which sat just on the left-hand side of the bow. So it was a little adapter plate which came off and they had it for front stabilizers which moved the weight of the stabilizer to the left of the bow. Now why are they doing that? Because most of the weight is on the right hand side where your sight is and most of the weight on the actual riser is on the right. So they thought by putting the stabilizer on the left that balances the bow more. So the concept of your stabilizer being left or right really doesn't matter. And that's in my opinion. So we go to my yellow bow. Now we're gonna zoom up on that. Now you'll see the stabilizer on this one is exactly the opposite to the red. The stabilizer slightly points out to the right hand side. It's very, very minor, as the red one's very, very minor to the left. Well, it depends where you line things up with. But my point is always, like if, if you buy a bow and you're not comfortable with it, you just say, look, I'm not comfortable with this one, I'll, you know, before you shoot it. But for me, it doesn't worry me at all. Um, so for me, this bow, the way it's all lined up, I'm happy, it shoots well. If I point it in the middle, it goes in the middle. If I point it in the eight, it goes in the eight. Life is that simple. So we're gonna fit this to the form and we're gonna shoot some arrows with it eight degrees to the left and eight degrees to the right. Now you can always adjust, with a V-bar system, you can always adjust your weight. I'm not gonna bother for this ex experience because I don't think having this weight, which is seven ounces, out to here is gonna make a huge difference to me versus eight ounces on that side. Even though the stabilizer is 33 inches long, um, and it is gonna change the balance, but I'm interested to see what it feels like and most of the bows I get, the stabilizer is not out by, by eight degrees. It's out by a cup, you know, a little bit left or right. So now most hunting bows are using short stabilizers so you won't even see this. It's not even an issue. It's really gonna be for target archers who are putting this big long stabilizer down. They're coming behind the bow, they're looking, they're going, oh, things aren't quite straight. Like, yeah. Okay, so let's fit this and let's see how it goes. Now my first arrow is gonna be with, without it, so you can sort of see how I shoot, and then we're gonna put it left and right, and also down so you can see the effects to see which one, which, which way it feels better. Okay, so I'm gonna shoot three arrows with my normal stabilizer setup. Now I started this video saying this stuff doesn't really worry me, and the person who's picky with their stuff is gonna say, no, no, this stuff's really important. What's really important is to get your mind right because if you start worrying about stuff in your mind and you start worrying about your stabilizer, you start worrying about this, you're not gonna shoot a good score to, at all. So, so as far as I'm concerned, the most important, well, practice is the most important, 
but getting your mind right. If you're worried about your stabilizers, you're worried about this, forget it, go home, because that's not the purpose. Just enjoy the archery, enjoy the shooting, and Now I haven't warmed up, so I'm making my excuses before I start. But the bow, the bow feels good to shoot. And the purpose of this video is to show the difference between eight degrees left and eight degrees right and then eight degrees down. So it feels nice to me, like I'm comfortable. That one shot, well, I'm guessing it shot low because that's where I aimed it when I sh when it went off as really important for me to practice I cannot stress it enough if I practice four hours a day I can shoot decent when I say decent scores good scores if I'm down to like an hour a day like they're still pretty decent scores but they're not they're not really that that crash hot So my main thing for myself is to put the work in. The whole equipment for me, even though I'm an archery shop, is a secondary thing. It's to put the work in. And that's if you're going to shoot really good. Now I don't know where those arrows went. But the bow felt good. First end was terrible. Like, but it doesn't worry me because they went exactly where I aimed them. Now I've put the um, disconnect on and I've pointed it out to the left. So I'll show you the angle of the stabilizer. So you'll see the angle of the stabilizer now is way out to that side. Now I've never seen a stabilizer that bad on a bow. I've seen close to it. I've never seen one that bad. So let's shoot these arrows and let's see how this feels. Like I said, if you are worried about the angle of the stabilizer, this disconnect will can fix it because you can angle it at any angle you want down the bow. Um, <laughs> it looks freaky. I'm just going to show you the. So there's the. I'm going to try and. So there's the angle of the arrow. You can see the stabilizer way out to the left. How weird does that look? Now, it feels, the bow feels exactly the same. It feels no difference at all. It looks really wacky. Um, I've got to see if I can shoot it because my head's just go, whoa, that's really weird. Now, I feel, <laughs> it feels exactly the same to shoot. My head's like, my head's like, well, this is a bit weird. I feel like I've got a boomerang on the front of my bow. But it feels, the, the shock feels exactly the same. The aiming was exactly the same. holding exactly the same in the center. Now I'm going to, this video is about um, stabilizers and the angle of them, but what's really important is your own fitness and your strength. Now my asthma is not good at the moment and I should be exercising to increase my lung capacity. So. So you've always got to be honest with yourself about how you can improve your own archery. Um, but this feels exactly the same. Like there's no, I don't know what's gripping right down the other end. I'm feeling like it's going to be better than the last end. Now we're putting a stabilizer on an angle like this, while it sounds crazy, I tell you where it's going to be really effective for cloud archery. 
because if you shoot a big long stabilizer for cloud it gets in the way with mirrors if you put an eight degree angle on your stabilizer so it's angled off to the set off to the side it's not going to get in the way of your mirrors i've never thought of it before let's go down and see where those arrows went so at that end besides me shooting the wrong target i'm going to say it's pretty similar to the last end my sights are obviously a little bit low um, so I'm going to move my sight down a little bit. Just a couple of clicks. Now we're going to move the stabilizer out to the right. But I'm going to say it's, it felt the same. Um, those shots were all me. I don't have much breath at the moment. So we're going to move it out to the one side. So this is out to the right. Now if you aim the wrong target, obviously at archery it's a huge bugger because you don't score any points. So, down the arrow, down the centre of the rest, the stabiliser should be out to there. You can see the stabiliser way out that side. It's funny for sure. Okay, let's see if I can put them in the middle this time. It is a little bit windy. That's not the excuse though, I just haven't shot enough arrows. It's interesting, this time with the stabilizer out to the right, the bow's definitely wanted to pull like that. It's wanting to pull to the side. Now you could correct that by putting a weight to this side here. Now what was interesting, when I was on the left hand side, I got none of that pull to the left or pull to the right. So this is very similar to stacking up your weights on one side of the bow. So why is it pulling to one side for me? Because my I'm shooting a a shoot through riser, I'm shooting back stabilizer where everything's balanced and I've got more weight on this side now I've actually put a stack more on that so for me on the left was clearly better because it balanced up the weight a little bit better on this side it's making it the bow not balanced but you could correct that with weights putting it on the left hand side you gotta remember it's seven ounces seven ounces out to it's probably almost 30 centimeters, 312 inches out to the one side. The shot itself felt fine, so I think I'll shoot alright with it. It feels very much like instead of shooting V bars, which is what I've got here, we've got a single stabilizer on the side that's exactly what this feels like it's creating more torque in my hand um, now when I originally got this perform I shot it I shot this bow with a single and I went to the doubles basically I was looking for accuracy sounds funny but I went for the setup that I used on the expression previously so I, originally I went for the sidebar and I wasn't getting the same scores, so I went, look, I'm just going to go exactly what I did with my expression, same peep, same stabilizers, and let's see what happens and my scores were better. So, as a result, I haven't played around with any further. But the shot feels pretty good. Um, I don't like the talking. I'd have to put weight on the left hand side for this to balance it up. But like I said when that started this video, Rio Wild put heaps of weight on the left hand side and an unbalanced setup and he obviously shoots far better than I do. Now I got kicked around a bit with the wind that time so just one more, because actually I think I'm, I feel like I'm actually shooting pretty good arrows. I 
feel like these arrows are better than the other two, so. Well, that one would have shot out to the right because that's where it went off. I was struggling with the wind a little bit and I went off to the right. Should be a nine to the about three o'clock, two o'clock, because that's where it went off. Anyway, let's go down and see where they are. Um, I don't like it as much to the right. Left was clearly fine because everything balanced, but it didn't balance to the right. So you'll see that was clearly my best group, except for that last arrow, which I shot at two o'clock, which was in the nine, which exactly, that's exactly where I shot that arrow. So for me, that was my best group. So, and it felt good. Like the shots came off clean. The bow didn't feel balanced, but it created a torque in my hand grip which made the bow kind of sit, sit better, I'm gonna say better, different. So it created more positive grip, which is what Rio Wild so sort of said about creating torque in the hand grip. So now we're gonna move this downwards. Now downwards is what, I'm gonna say the majority of top shooters do. Now the concept of shooting down is to move the weight of the bow down to create a kill-like situation. Now when you move the stabilizer down, obviously you can then create the exact angle you want on your stabilizer. Now you're probably going to ask why I'm doing this video to start with. Because I had a customer, and I get this question all the time. So I had this customer who brought a bow off me and he rang up, I probably said this at the start. He said about the center and I said basically there are no bows to set up. So he then went to PSE and said, PSE, I'm not happy with that, that answer. It shouldn't be that you spend this much money on an expensive bow and everything's not perfect. And PSE said to me, do you want another riser? So that means I'd make exactly the same riser that he's already got with the same serial number, the same color, send it over and then you fit it to the bow. And I was like, well, can you guarantee everything's going to be perfect? and they said have you had a look at it originally and i said no i haven't so i then wrote back to the guy and i said look you know where did you buy the bow from so that way then i can go to that shop and say have you seen this how far out it is this stabilizer because i assume it's out by a little bit um but PSE was happy to make another riser which just blows me away because it must cost well it's half the cost of the bow it must cost 700 odd dollars where you fit a down angle, this thing to it. So that's the down angle there. You can see it just moves the weight downwards a little bit. So you can buy the down angle stabilizer attachment for about $30, $40. They're, they're pretty inexpensive. Um, there's a whole bunch of companies who make them. It's a very standard bit of gear. So this is angled down. Now to me this feels very much the same as the stabilizer being out the front. I really cannot notice the weight being downwards. Now you notice Stefan Hansen when he shoots his angle down, he shoots a huge angle down, like it must be 20 degrees. Now you're going to say, why don't I shoot 20, to 20 degrees down or 10 degrees down or whatever? Now this was my actual disconnect, which I brought about a year, two years ago. To shoot with my expression, I fitted it and I couldn't tell the difference. I couldn't tell the difference. I was like, well, I'll just shoot without it. Keep life simple. So, but it's been sitting there and I was like, well, actually it's really handy for doing this video. So. Now I'm going to say the, the down, down angle feels better. They, when, the, when the stabilizer was angled out to the right, it created a bit of torque, which felt different in my hand. I'm going to say the down angle feels a little bit better than the straight, and I don't know why. 
but it just feels a little bit better so maybe I'll shoot with this for a, for a few weeks and see how it goes and when I say it feels better it feels the same okay but feels the same as straight but I would be happy to try it the vibration feels a little bit less it's hard to pick but and this is what I do I just try stuff I basically put it on try it and I go oh, do I like it don't I like it the most important thing is to keep shooting and not to mess with your head you don't want to make too many changes at one time because then you don't know what you're doing now there's a bit of wind there and I was moving around but feels all right now to the left felt pretty good um, out to the right created torque down feels pretty much the same as straight so my overall conclusion is it doesn't make much difference what makes difference is these weights on the bank back to create the torque the balance of the bow whether you want the bow sitting straight up and down how you want the bow to feel so these back stabilizers whether you shoot one or two and the angle in which you fit them to create the balance and the amount of weight you fit to your stabilizers is far more important than whether it's in a straight line and I don't even know if it's in a straight line right now because I just bolted on it which you saw so let's go down on the target and see how those last arrows looked okay so I'm up here at the target this is a good group most of them are 10s except for that one it's windy and it's I can make whatever excuse I want but to me the bow it really doesn't make that much difference at the end of the day I've got to point this thing in the middle and if I if I release the shot and it's in the middle it's going to go in the middle so whether the stabilizer is off at a 8 10 degree angle 10 degree that way it's really not making that much difference to me it's the balance so I hope that's been worthwhile now I don't there's a few different ways which bow manufacturers put stabilizer bushings into the bow one is a bushing which is actually glued into the bow so they drill a hole they stick the bushing in either with pressure or with glue the other way is where they put a thread in and they put a helicoil in on top of that um, I can't remember I cannot remember it being done by hand or machine in the factories that I've been in so and I've seen the whole process it's just maybe it just happens quickly I don't know so but they are never one bow will be one way one will be the other and one will be straight down the middle just because of that so I'm hoping that's helped you um, but yeah it gets back to practicing and not worrying about this thing up here it's so important not to worry about stuff so anyway I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies have a great day and try and shoot and have a good time doing it Thank you. Bye.